Alright y'all, I've been, listening. after my last video, I've been getting more excited. I've been watching all these archetypes. I've been trying to choose, like, yo, which ones are really gonna stand out, which ones aren't. There's new information coming out every single day, so let me keep you updated. Now, first of all, if y'all new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, right? When 2K18 comes out, I'm gonna be on a grind like no other. Listen, because I dropped my video yesterday announcing the build I'm gonna be making, the first build, probably gonna be my main build in NBA 2K18. Some people were coming at me saying, Agent, you're gonna have to be shooting off dribble shots if that's gonna be your main build. And I don't know where everybody is getting all this information from that I've never seen before, because unless you have the prelude already, there's no way to know. But what I do know is the build I talked about in that video has a higher three-pointer than a pure shot creator. So explain that one. Like, I'm sure that build's gonna be dominant, right? The only question mark again was that limitless range. Regardless, this video here, we're talking about sharpshooters in general. The only way to have those Hall of Fame sharpshooter badges is if one, you blend with a shot creator sharpshooter or you just do a pure sharpshooter. There's specific builds like limitless range. The only way to get Hall of Fame is to go pure sharpshooter. And I think probably stretch big. I actually have no idea. I haven't, literally when it comes to big men, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna find myself a cool glass cleaner or paint protector and I'm just gonna run with that person but for me I'm not looking at that stuff alright so check this out because it's peculiar the way that the three-point shooters are set up we know last year they were really overpowered so 2k this year is trying to find a balance there's been a bunch of people releasing stuff that I'm like how was this even made? There's no way this could possibly be accurate. Like, I'm looking at right now a giant Excel document explaining the maximum attributes that a specific build can have. When it's not possible because there is, n we didn't even know none of the attributes for any of the builds yet. So I'm like, how did this Excel document come to be? On top of the fact that it doesn't account for a wingspan, weight, height, all of that, which like if I make a 6'10 sharpshooter, it's gonna be very different than a 6'2. Where is that? But still, even though it's not completely accurate, it kind of helps you visualize and map out what changes happen from last year coming on to this year. Hey, shout out to Dunk, man. He tweeted me out this graph and he's been updating it ever since. It's, it literally shows the amount of badges each specific build has. So there's gonna be some builds that have eight or nine less total badges than other builds. And y'all know I'm betting on attributes this year, but I still wanna make sure my badges are set. Point blank period, it makes zero sense to have a sharpshooter primary and not have a sharpshooter secondary and become a pure archetype. Any person who does sharpshooter playmaker, sharpshooter shot creator, sharpshooter, whatever comes next, you're losing all the Hall of Fame badges that makes you a sharpshooter. Take sharp out the equation. If you don't have those badges, you are just a shooter. You were just a shooter with good attributes that can't pull from limitless the way a pure sharpshooter can. And in return, the attributes you get aren't even worth it. This year, the sharpshooter is deficient in so many areas. So many people are looking at ball handling to tell whether you can speed boost or not, but isn't acceleration the stat we should be paying attention to? And not based off any facts, but based off pure logic. Acceleration is how fast you can get up off the jump. And sharpshooters have anywhere between nine to 11 acceleration. That is horrendous, especially compared to every other build. Now the player I played with when I was at the event, it didn't feel sluggish or slow, it just felt like it wasn't explosive. So you're definitely gonna feel that explosion coming off a of playmaker if you have some sort of blend where your ball handling is higher if you mess with the shot creator. But some people are looking at the acceleration of sharpshooters and getting so scared because they're like, yo, I'm not gonna be able to speed boost. Y'all forgetting this is a game of basketball. I don't care how many people try and tell me, agent, this is the year where slashers are gonna take over. If you can't stretch the floor, I am sagging. It is that simple. And when I start to sag, it makes you driving so much more difficult. Now, something to note, when I was playing NBA 2K18, there were way more blow-by animations. For those who don't know what those are, it's when you're dribbling, and it gives them the animation to blow by you and get ahead. So it's not nothing the defender did wrong, it's just the animation the other person had because he has, for example, a playmaker's gonna have max speed, max playmaking, right? And if you're a 6'2 sharpshooter, you don't have no defense and you're weak, if you made minimum weight, he's gonna blow by you. You're gonna see that animation happen more often. So I saw some people on Twitter asking, yo, what about the lockdowns? It doesn't seem like it's worth making a lockdown, especially because Mike Wang tweeted saying that steel success seen a considerable decrease from last year. But I'm here to tell you right now, at the event I was playing with a sharpshooting shot creator, 
and the amount of times I got blown by. And I felt like I was playing some pretty solid defense. Maybe there's some settings I could have changed, there's some things I could have done, but it's gonna be valuable to have a lockdown. I just wanted to point that out. But the sharpshooter in general just doesn't have any real athleticism. Even if you make him super short and minimum weight, all this stuff, you can do everything in your power, but he's still not gonna be moving that fast. And we do know that this year, brick wall isn't as effective as it was last year, so it's also gonna be tougher to get open using screens. So in many ways, the sharpshooter seen a nerf, as I feel like it should've, because it was the best build last year. The more I look at these lists, the more I could get the idea that they tried really hard to balance the game this year. And I saw a tweet, it was from one of the devs on Twitter that said something like, everybody's so worried about creating the best archetype off rip. I'm I'm paraphrasing. But people should really just play with what they enjoy most, and if you're good at the game, you'll find a way to dominate. Now, I, you won't catch me playing with a player that can't shoot a three ball, but I know there's gonna be lockdowns who straight up dominate the game. There's gonna be paint protectors, there's gonna be stretches, there's gonna be whatever the blend or the pure archetype you make, there's ways to just straight up dominate. That being said, do you like the benefits of having a build that's superior to a lot of different builds? Which is why I'm saying it doesn't make sense to blend anything primary sharpshooter. And the sad the bad thing is, there's so many people that are basing their opinions straight off of NBA 2K17 that, do, that haven't paid attention or focused on the changes is gonna end up making a build, pay VC, which by the way, we found out that it's gonna cost about 200k VC, the number was 190k approximately, to upgrade your player max to 85 overall. We also found out that I think at overall 75, you unlock the jump shot creator, so if you're buying VC to upgrade your player on day one, you're starting off with the jump shot creator. Mike Wang put out a tweet saying, passing out of the shot will lead to a lot of turnovers this year, especially for non-playmakers. Now, this is something that, again, sharpshooters were very guilty of. Now, me personally, I very, like once every few months, I would pass out of a shot. It was very rare for me because it just didn't make, if I would only pull up if I knew I would make it. I don't just get up and then change my mind midway. It doesn't work like that for me. But again, there were a lot of sharpshooters who did. So those who did, you're gonna be shooting a lot of turnovers this year. Mike Wang was on a spree giving info on Twitter today. So I'm gonna recap it real quick. Somebody tweeted a video at Mike Wang and said, Yo, why are man's missing so many shots close to the paint, Doc? He didn't say it like that, paraphrasing. Mike Wang replied, there were a lot of four shots inside with some pretty weak finishers. If you take higher quality shots in the paint, the numbers are fine. So we're getting the impression that, and it's like that when I played it as well, is you're not gonna be making as many drives and attempts to the basket if you're not one of those archetypes who could finesse on that. And the sharpshooter is horrible at that. <laughs> Let me get the exact attribute. Sharpshooters have between two to four attributes out of 25 for dunking and nine to 11 for layup. So unless something changes, if you're a sharpshooter, especially if you're a short one, you're not gonna be driving into the paint and making too many layups contest. We finally got some good news for the sharpshooters, especially in catch and shoot situations where you get the ball and then you dip the ball before going up for the shot when you can really just go like this and go up for the shot immediately without having to wind up and go through all those animations. This year, Mike Wang is saying they're much quicker than they ever have been. No extra steps before compression like past games. And I guess the same goes for any type of shot that you're trying to make. So I'm gonna have a pure build, you guys know that, but the reason I made my previous video, which I'm gonna link in a card above, and the reason I'm excited about that specific build is because all the stuff that the sharpshooters got nerfed about this year in NBA 2K18, the, the, the shot creator main gives boosts for. So you're gonna see those boosts for ball handling, you're gonna see the boosts for athleticism. It's, it's like all the stuff you're gonna feel like you're deficient at, you won't be as good a three-point shooter and have those Hall of Fame badges, but again, it all depends on that limitless range. Anyway, this is just the stuff that's filtering through my brain. I can't stop thinking about this type of moves and dribble, like everything. Anyway, the gameplay y'all be seeing like in between these clips is from Good Game Bro. To be honest, I don't know how these guys captured footage because I didn't know people were doing that shit, but he's been uploading footage. So if you guys wanna see him, I'll link him in the description and his link's been on the screen when you've seen the gameplay throughout the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, Subscribe if you guys are new. Yo, 2K18 is going to be a grind and I'm ready for it. <sighs> I'm out, y'all. Peace.